Hi, I'm Dave Marshall. I'm a radiation oncologist at Hollins Cancer Center at MUSC. And today I'm gonna to talk about high-risk prostate cancer and the management options patients have. With high-risk prostate cancer, these are the fastest growing prostate cancers that we see. These are cancers that definitely need to be treated. Many patients with prostate cancer can have their prostate cancer closely observed under active surveillance regimens, and they don't ever need treatment. High-risk prostate cancer is not one of those. All of these cancers need to be treated in anybody who expects to live five years or more. So that's almost everyone. So if you have high-risk prostate cancer, you need to seek treatment immediately. Treatment options for high-risk prostate cancer include radical prostatectomy, external beam radiation, or a combination of seed implant and external beam radiation. Radiation therapy can be done in one of two ways for high-risk disease. It can be done completely with external beam radiation, which is once a day, Monday through Friday, treatments with x-rays. In this setting, the patient lays on a table and the machine moves around the patient, delivering x-rays into the pelvis and the prostate area. It takes about five minutes. Patients don't see or feel anything when they get a treatment. But they have to come back every day, Monday through Friday, for several weeks, up to nine. So it's a big commitment as far as remaining in town while you get this treatment. The treatment itself is very underwhelming. Patients don't see or feel anything. They have virtually no side effects until maybe two or three weeks into the treatment course. At this point, patients may develop some irritation of the bladder or irritation of the bowels as the treatment goes on. These symptoms are generally mild to moderate and not severe. Patients may experience bladder irritation in the form of weaker stream when they pee or stopping and starting or getting up more in the middle of the night to urinate. Patients could have some burning when they pee. These symptoms will peak about halfway through the course of treatment and persist until we finish the course of radiation and then usually slowly go away. Similarly, the bowel irritation usually is very mild and is characterized as more frequent or looser bowel movements. Again, this peaks towards the end of the course of radiation therapy and then slowly goes away with time. This plus perhaps a bit of fatigue in some patients are really all the side effects that you feel during the course of treatment and shortly thereafter. So again, patients don't end up in the hospital, patients are able to continue their normal activities of daily living, and we tell patients to continue to be as normal as possible during this process. Another way to deliver the radiation is with a combination of external beam radiation for a shorter period and a seed implant. A seed implant is a one-day outpatient procedure where we place radioactive pellets in and around the prostate um, under general anesthesia. After the procedure is over, you go home the same day, so it's completely outpatient setting. Patients then may have some bruising or swelling because we place the radioactive pellets in and around your prostate through long skinny needles, so there could be some trauma to the area. Now, patients may see some blood in their urine or blood in their bowel movements for a few days, but usually this clears up within a week or so. The uh, symptoms from the seed implant part of the uh, treatment are similar to external beam radiation in that you may have bladder irritation or looser, more frequent bowel movements. However, because the radioactive dose is stronger from the radioactive pellets we place, the bladder irritation may be a bit more severe with a seed implant compared to external beam by itself. So the seed implant is a more aggressive, more invasive way to deliver the radiation dose and has a bit more intensity of the bladder irritation symptoms in particular. So why would anybody pick a seed implant plus external beam compared to external beam alone? Well, if you have external beam alone, it's once a day, Monday through Friday, typically for nine weeks, 44 treatments. So that's a lot of coming back and forth. If one has a seed implant, then we can shorten the external beam portion of the, of the treatment to about five weeks. So that's a month or so less coming back and forth for treatments. The other reason is maybe even more important is that the cure rate has been shown to be higher if we do a seed implant and five weeks of external beam compared to nine weeks of external beam without the seed implant. So it's definitely a trade-off. 
As far as I know, the most effective way to treat high-risk prostate cancer is with a combination of a seed implant plus the external beam, as I've described. So this is the way many patients go if they're good candidates for it. Now, not everybody is a good candidate for a seed implant as part of their treatment. If your prostate's too big or if the bladder function is not good enough before we start, then it's better to do just the external beam without the seed implant. So this has to be a personalized decision based on your situation. If we use radiation to treat a high-risk prostate cancer, whether we do a seed implant or external beam without the seed implant, the side effects are similar in kind. It's bladder irritation, weaker streams, stopping and starting, getting up more in the middle of the night, maybe some burning when you pee. These symptoms will peak in the month or so after the seed implant or after the radiation is complete. They will hang around for a few weeks and then slowly go away so that by a year or so, most patients are back to where they were before we started messing with them, okay? So the symptoms are similar in kind, but perhaps a little more intense, particularly the bladder irritation, if one gets a seed implant as opposed to the external beam without a seed implant. In fact, the risk of having to have a catheter placed to help you empty your bladder with external beam without a seed implant is about 1%. So 99% of patients will never need a catheter after external beam by itself. If we combine that with a seed implant, that number increases to about 10%. So there is a higher risk of needing a catheter place with the seed implant. Again, the trade-off is fewer trips back and forth for those daily treatments and a higher cure rate. The other thing we need to combine with radiation for high-risk disease is hormonal therapy. Hormonal therapy is very important for patients with high-risk disease. High-risk prostate cancer tries to spread. Hormone therapy can help prevent that from happening. Hormone therapy helps us in two ways. One, it makes the prostate cancer more susceptible to radiation. So it increases the likelihood that the radiation kills all the prostate cancer in the prostate. The second thing it does is it has effects all throughout your body so that the cells that might be trying to spread to other parts of your body are unable to do so. So it decreases the likelihood that the prostate cancer spreads. So hormone therapy is very important when you combine it with radiation in high-risk prostate cancer. Hormonal therapy are medications that decrease a gentleman's testosterone levels. These are not estrogens or female hormones. These are medications that flip a switch in your brain that tell your body to stop making testosterone. So shortly after you start these medications, your testosterone levels will go way down, close to zero. Now, the way a gentleman notices this is that he may have hot flashes, he may have night sweats. Just like when women go through menopause, guys can get these hot flashes as well. Decreased sex drive is something else that people notice. The hormone, the testosterone that's been circulating in your body, punching that button in your brain that says, think about sex, is not doing that. So you have less interest in sexual activity. You can have problems with erections because of that. You can cause problems with making it easier to put on fat and harder to maintain muscle mass. With high-risk prostate cancer, the hormone therapy needs to be on board for about two years. During that course, you can have difficulty maintaining your body conformation, and it's more important than ever that you exercise and do resistance weight training so that you can maintain that muscle mass and calcium in your bones because the lack of testosterone can increase the risk of osteopenia or calcium loss from your bones as well. The side effects from hormonal therapy can be wide ranging. They can increase problems with anemia, diabetes, or cholesterol if you have them. When you take the medicines for two years, it can have an effect on these other disease processes so that if you have a history of coronary artery disease or heart attack, it could increase your risk of having problems like that. Now, what we know about this hormonal therapy with radiation in the setting of high-risk prostate cancer is that despite all these downsides of hormonal therapy. If you have high-risk prostate cancer treated with radiation, you are more likely to be alive five or 10 years from now if you have radiation with the hormonal therapy than the radiation without the hormonal therapy. So it's a very important part of the treatment plan for patients who seek treatment with radiation for their high-risk disease. Now, other options for treatment include radical prostatectomy, Radical prostatectomy 
is the surgical removal of the prostate, and it can be done for patients with high-risk prostate cancer, but it's usually select patients with high-risk prostate cancer. It's usually patients with a small volume of cancer where the expectation is that the surgeon will be able to take it out uh, completely and not need any further treatment down the road. The fact is that with most patients with high-risk disease, if they get a surgery to remove their prostate, they're going to need radiation and hormonal therapy anyway after the surgery. So many patients choose to not take that risk of needing surgery, radiation, and hormones, and just go straight to radiation and hormonal therapy. The benefit of surgery in this setting is that if the surgery is successful, you could get away without needing any other treatment. So surgery by itself is appealing, but the fact is that most men who have surgery for high-risk prostate cancer will end up needing radiation and hormonal therapy down the road. So most patients with high-risk disease, especially those as we get older, above age 70, most of those gentlemen will be treated with radiation and hormonal therapy. So the acute side effects of radiation for prostate cancer, those side effects of bladder irritation, weaker streams, stopping and starting, getting up more at night, having to take a medicine for that, or looser, more frequent bowel movements, those acute side effects peak about a month or so into the course of radiation. They persist until we finish the radiation and then they slowly go away with time. So that most people by several weeks, a few months, or a year or so afterwards, are back to baseline in their bladder and bowel function. But if we do hear, or you tell us that you have some blood in your urine or your stool, we have to check it out and make sure we're not missing something. So we'll usually do a scope. We'll look in your colon, we'll look in your bladder to make sure we're not missing a polyp or something else that needs to be taken care of. This is very rare, but we wanna make sure that we don't miss something important that needs to be dealt with. Usually if it's from the radiation, we'll see some scarring in the lining of the bladder or the colon that can bleed, especially if you strain or have a hard bowel movement. So if you avoid constipation, you can usually eliminate this bleeding and most of the time we don't have to do anything about it. Other long-term side effects that can happen from radiation treatments or radical prostatectomy for that matter is one could see problems with erectile dysfunction or changes in sexual function. The prostate makes some of the secretions that come out with sexual activity. So it's possible you may see less secretions if you have radiation in your prostate. Now, if you have your prostate removed, most of the time you don't have any secretions with sex because all the tubes have been tied or cut. But with radiation, the prostate is still there. It's just kind of shriveling over time. And so you may see less secretions with sexual activity. Of course, you can have problems with erectile dysfunction with any of these options. Hormonal therapy contributes to that as well. So any treatment for high-risk prostate cancer comes with a risk of having problems with erections down the road. The good news is there are multiple things we can do about that and we have specialists that are focused on that area that we're happy to send you to if we need to. With radiation, even with surgery, it's possible but very unlikely that you could have a, a really difficult problem because of the treatment, a very severe reaction to the radiation in this setting. In this case, you could have a sore that doesn't heal that requires chronic pain medicine. You could have severe bleeding that requires transfusion, or you could have an injury to your bowel or bladder that could require surgery to fix, even with a colostomy bag. The good news is the risk of that happening is less than 1%, and we do many things to minimize that risk as much as possible. It's probably about as low as the risk of having a catastrophic event with anesthesia during a prostatectomy. So the risk of any of these things happening to you is not zero, but it's very low. Uh, finally, radiation exposure is probably not good for us. We know that from atomic bomb survivors or Chernobyl survivors, so that if you have a big exposure to this uncontrolled radioactivity, it can increase the risk of bad things happening like thyroid cancers, leukemias, other tumors. So theoretically, it's possible that this radiation that we deliver to your prostate area to get rid of your prostate cancer could increase the risk of you getting another tumor in your pelvis over the next 5, 10, 20 years. The good news is that the risk of this happening to you is very small. If your risk without radiation of getting another tumor in your pelvis over the next 20 years is X, if I give you radiation to get rid of your prostate cancer, that risk goes from X to X plus one or two percentage points. It's a very small increase in risk. You probably will not have another tumor in your pelvis, but the risk may be slightly increased if you choose radiation to get rid of your prostate cancer. You have multiple options, just like the other forms of low and intermediate risk prostate cancer, but I will say that with high risk disease, you need to choose a treatment option 
and almost everybody needs to move forward with definitive treatment for high-risk prostate cancer. This cancer is one that needs to be taken care of and taken care of in the next few weeks. For prostate cancer, it's very important that every patient hear about all these different options that you have because there's not one best way to treat prostate cancer. Some patients may be best treated with surgery, some with radiation, some with a combination of seed implant, etc. So make sure that you talk to your urologist and you talk to a radiation oncologist about all these different options. You need to be an educated consumer when it comes to figuring out how you're gonna manage your prostate cancer. At Hollings Cancer Center, we truly believe that the best cancer care comes in the context of a clinical trial. No matter where you get treated, ask your provider, how can I participate in a clinical trial? Because that's how we improve cancer care for ourselves and for our future. If you need more information about how to care for your prostate cancer, reach out to Hollings Cancer Center. We're here to help.